the blue Pacific waters of the Hawaiian Islands, a little piece of paradise that is a vacation escape for travelers from all over the world. But these young women aren't here for the scenery. They've come to work on a dream, representing their country at the Olympics. From Australia, Alana Slater and Lisa Skinner have already tasted Olympic competition. With experience and maturity, they hope to carry a young team looking to once again contend for an Olympic medal. The Chinese team has arrived with something to prove. They finished a disappointing fourth at the World Championships last summer. With Athens three months away, it's time to make a move. The USA women are reigning world champs and Olympic favorites. They're led by Carly Patterson, whose floor routine nailed down that world title last August. Now, Carly and a few unfamiliar faces have come to Hawaii to try and impress their coaches and the judges. They want to show the world they can do it. Four women looking to make a statement they hope will last all the way to Greece. Today, the final international gymnastics test before the Games of Athens. A chance to see how the competition looks as the clock ticks down. This is the Pacific Alliance Championships. Nine nations have brought their teams to the gorgeous shores of Waikiki Beach and Hawaii on the island of Oahu. And in the Stand Sheriff Center, a chance to see how the United States feels about defending its world championship at the Olympic Games. Carly Patterson to the left here in Honolulu. They come together, four athletes per team, three scores count, and the Australians will be part of this first rotation. They've got their game faces on. They had some things to cheer about at the Sydney Olympic Games, but now they'll take their two stars and try to build on that. The Chinese team will not be part of this first rotation, but we will see them for sure. Al Trowick along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett and Elfie Schlegel, and guys, as we get set to see the faces that could become part of the big story in Athens, Greece, we turn to the American story, and Alicia Sacramoni, is she a part of this American team, perhaps, well, or not? She, she could very well be, Al, and every time a U.S. athlete walks out on the floor, that lady right there, Marta Caroli, has got her in her sights, and it is a trials from now until the Olympic Games. Every single movement these kids make is being evaluated as to whether or not they're good enough to be on certainly the front running team in the world today in women's gymnastics. And of course, Alicia is a newcomer. Nobody knows her name. She's hoping to change that at this competition. And as Marta Crowley- oh, Wait a minute, Elfie. Her family knows her name. Well, her family <laughs> knows her name, but the gymnastic community doesn't. And this is where she's trying to make a statement because for someone like Alicia, time is running out. She has so few opportunities to make that statement to Marta. But what she does have is tremendous power. Marta loves her personality, says it's a spark in the gym. Sometimes you even have to reel it in, she says. But what she's looking from Alicia here is confidence. Every competition is a trial. She's looking for her to hit in a pressure situation. She's actually a tremendous athlete, but just sm small, slight little checks of balance. But as Tim mentioned, she has incredible, incredible power. Check out that dismount, does it with such ease. But what you're seeing here is the lack of international experience. That's not as good as she wanted to do. She, she went up there and I think she was a little bit conservative. You can't, you can't blame these kids. I mean, it's a first time out in a really major competition like this, being consoled by her coach, Mihai. But what she does so well are these acrobatic skills, front pike, but as you can see there, the balance check, not a good thing. You know what, Elfie, she's got all the finishing moves, the fingertips, the toe points, it's those bobbles that have to really hurt. Absolutely, and those are the things the judges notice and they add up in a team competition. She gets a 9.35, Alicia Sacramoni from Team USA. Now we get to the Australians from Canberra, Melissa Monroe.
And this Australia team had their greatest victory at the last World Championships in Anaheim. They won a bronze medal, really shocked the entire gymnastics community. Certainly in the medal picture come Athens. They are actually competing without their major star though, Monette Russo is not here. What you see any time a nation hosts the Olympic Games, they try to peak all their teams to perform their best at the Olympics. Now, Australia did have some moments to cheer for, but they didn't come away with the medal that they wanted in Sydney. You always wonder what's going to happen in the Olympics after their peaking Olympics, how they're going to do with that. Well, the Australian head coach, Peggy Lydic, of course, a former American coach, coach of Shannon Miller, she has taken this meet quite seriously. She's brought her top athletes, with the exception of her top athlete in Australia, who is taking a break. But this young lady is a first-year senior trying to make a statement as well, hoping to make the Olympic team. There's Peggy Lydic on the left. You know, I liken this to a spring training game. Sort of a laid-back atmosphere, Hawaii, the sun, sunscreen, all that stuff. Not a packed house, but yet there are a lot of sub-stories going on. Y if you climbed into somebody's body, you'd feel the tension, you'd feel the pressure, you'd feel the excitement. And that's what this is right now. Maybe not in the most intense circumstances, but a very intense exercise. After months and months and weeks and weeks in the gym, they're on the stage now, and this is the time where they have to show it. Melissa Monroe gets an 8.916. So that is a, a subpar performance in spite of the smiles. Now, Elise Ashino from Santa Ana, California. Another one of these, these faces that we have not seen in an international circumstance for Team USA. What have you seen in practice from this young woman? Well, she's actually a, a very competent performer. A lot of personality uh, does, does excellent execution very big elements like that we don't see that too often nowadays from the usa athletes the team coordinator marta caroli likes them to just get their exercise started easily but right off the bat she just bangs two major acrobatic acrobatic elements out and you know tim she told us right out i've trained for 13 years i deserve to be on this team i've worked very hard she feels what she needs to do at this competition is let her personality come out a little bit more. The national championships on NBC the first weekend of June and then the Olympic trials the last weekend in June in preparation for the August Olympic Games. so interesting talking to these newcomers because the first thing that they're always quick to tell us is I need to prove myself to Marta I need to show her what I can do and Elfie, you bring up a good point we are not going to have the drama that we had in Boston prior to the Sydney Olympic Games we're going to have an Olympic trials but it remains sketchy as to what anyone could do at those Olympic trials to cement actually solidify a spot on the Olympic team that's gonna come at the ranch right in Houston Texas the home of the Corollis it is and this awesome routine right here, it matters. So do small steps like that. Every single performance these kids take this year at competitions, international meets, the training camps, they all factor in to who goes to Athens. And Tim will get Elisa Shino's score in a moment. She's there with a hug for Steve Rybacki, her coach. A lot of camaraderie on this Team USA, and there is no doubt who the anchor is, a proven international commodity. Carly Patterson, and she's up next in the Pacific Alliance Championships. The Pacific Alliance Gymnastics Championships, brought to you by New Venus Divine. Reveal the goddess in you. 
by new Hershey's Kisses filled with caramel, and by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. Back in Honolulu, Hawaii, Al Trowick along with Tim Daggett and Elfie Schlegel. This is Stephanie Morehouse from Melbourne, Australia. When Peggy Liddick was given the reins to guide the Australian gymnastics effort in preparation for the Sydney Olympics, it was thought that she would make them a factor. And she has made them a factor. They remain a factor as she remains their coach. Stephanie was an outstanding junior last year. Again, her first year competing as a senior athlete was also part of that bronze medal win in Anaheim last year. You know what's amazing? Nobody is sunburned. <laughs> and that is so easy to be in Hawaii. One last tumbling run, a double pike. It was a nice exercise, but doesn't really have the start value that she needs to bring in the big number. And start value is a big term in gymnastics, has been for a few years now. It's, it's what you could get with the elements that you use if you were perfect. Balance beam 9616 for Alisa Shino. And now Carly Huge Patterson. Huge for her. You talk about start value, this routine is packed with difficulty. Carly's start value is a 10-0. It, it's one of the most outstanding balance beam routines being done in the world today. And one of the reasons is because of Carly's dismount. It's unbelievable. We say it all the time, but the thing that makes her such a standout on this event is the extreme calmness on elements like this, so difficult. She takes her time, I think better than any athlete I've ever seen on this event. She really takes her time on the landings, doesn't rush anything. She absorbs everything. She's very light on her elements. You don't hear her come down on the beam in a big funk. It's, it's just done so easily. The biggest annual international gymnastics event in the United States is the American Cup, and Carly's won it twice. Twice in a row, and if you look at some of the names that have dominated the American Cup over the year and what years and what they've gone on to attain on world and Olympic levels, it is a very promising prediction for this young lady. And you know, for Carly, she, she likes being in these situations. She loves the pressure. She loves being known as the number one athlete in the United States. She says she does well under pressure. She does better under pressure. Here's the dismount I was referring to at the top of the routine. Half Absolutely turn. incredible. Blind landing. No question about it, world class with her coach Yevgeny Marchenko. And that becomes the yin and the yang of this whole thing. These gymnasts all have coaches, but they all have to give way to Marta in these Olympic situations. There's a lot of pushing and pulling going on. Super element that she performed right there, changing direction, but the same type of element right here, the double Arabian dismount, awesome height, great difficulty, takes a huge risk on the landing because it's blind. Fabulous. Nine, eight, these days in <laughs> gymnastics, that like, is wow. way out of the ballpark. <laughs> And, you know, we talked to Marta Caroli about all of the different athletes that are competing here. And Stephanie Morehouse, there you see the 9.1, the only athlete that you kind of 
get the feeling from Marta that really has almost earned that spot is Carly Patterson because of performances like this in critical situations. Alana Slater from Australia now at the age of 20. Boy, she had that one shining moment at the Sydney Olympics when she got that huge ovation. That was chills time it was. for that team. That's what the Olympics in Sydney was all about when she hit that routine and they roared in that building. But you know, this is maturity. She has experience, four-time world team member. She's been to the Olympics, wants to go to another. This routine is very classy. amazing thing about sports, your body never knows how much you want it. When you wake up on game day, you could have the flu or a cold, and now with these women, you don't factor in just that. You factor in the aging process and maturity, and what's your body going to be like just because that's your DNA? Is it going to be good enough for you to be a gymnast or not? And look at her out there, Al. She's so different from her other teammates, the juniors who have just become seniors. This is years of training. Watch her eye focus. The dance is just superb. Do you know what I mean, Elfie? I mean, just by genetics, your body is not going to be at 20 what it is at 15. It's just the way it is. And, and could you possibly take the body that you've been given by nature and make it a gymnastics body? Slater is still going strong. She's going to be on another Olympic team, and she might even be the team leader when they get there. There's Peggy Liddick. <laughs> wow, <laughs> she that's it. a rare yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, you usually don't see Peggy all that excited. One thing that hasn't changed is Alana's flaming red hair. Yeah. And you know, these Australians, they go through a, a very similar training camp environment as the American team. They gather about once a month for seven to 10 days from all over Australia. They come together and just like Marta, Peggy Lytic is the one in charge. Still to come, our first look at the Chinese team. We're back in Hawaii at the Pacific Alliance Gymnastics Championships, an important international look for the United States, which is in front, Australia, and all the countries here. Let's go to Elfie and Tim. Well, Al, this is actually the last major team test for the USA leading up to the Olympic Games. And Marta Caroli, national team coordinator, Elfie, told us earlier that there's more than just the team competition that's up for grabs here today. And Tim, she also told us that for Carly Patterson, she's already proven herself. But we have a couple of unknowns competing for the United States, and time is running out. For these athletes, they have to make a huge impression if they have any hopes of making the U.S. Olympic team. Another team that can challenge China is always fantastic. However, they finished out of the medals at the last world championships went home from that competition assessed everything said we got to get better on floor and vault and they actually do look a little better on those two events that they thought were weaknesses but they've also brought some athletes with very little international experience but the delegation tells us interestingly enough that these athletes here at the pacific alliance championships will be on their olympic team in athens and guys, the Chinese will vault in a moment, but talk about someone with a shot at making an Olympic team. Alicia Sacramoni, who so far is not showing any signs of pressure at this competition. She'll move to floor exercise and get another chance to impress Marta Caroli and the judges and us. All for that long shot hope of making the U.S. Olympic team. A dream that began for her in front of a television set almost eight years ago. Watching the girls from the 96 Olympic Games, that was it for me. I was like, I want to do that. That looks so awesome. More recently, you're like, wow, I guess I can be there. After working so hard and getting a competition like this and training camps. I try to keep my nerves on the inside. There's always that little moment when you show them, but then you have to keep yourself cool. But I'm nervous. I just want to do my best. I can bring some good quality to the team on floor and vault and beam too, it's just, I need to show that I can and that I could help them win gold if they had me for the team. I'm a newcomer and everyone sees me and they think they're a little intimidated by me because I, I guess I look scary. 
but um, once you get to know me, it's like, I will do anything for you if you're my friend, anything and everything for you, and I'm just that kind of person. Well, it's enough to give you chills, and Elfie, I know you've been out there touching a number of Canadian gymnasts over the years, and, and Tim, you know, you did with your 84 Olympic gold medal, but when you saw that moment in that arena in Atlanta, didn't you not think that there was someone out there who would be touched like that, and here she is? Well, what was very cute about that moment, she actually prefaced that by saying, when I was very little, I was inspired by the 96 team, and she has been on a mission ever since. What does she mean by, some people might think I'm scary? <laughs> I think it's all in the look when she performs skills like that. This is an event where she can help the USA. She mentioned her power. Vault and floor are the two events where this team could use her. You know, guys, I hate to bring up the baseball reference again, but I think there are just so many comparisons. That, you know, what you're saying about these little contributions to someone's selection, for example, uh, example, Alicia here, it's like having a guy who hits 300 during the regular season, but in the last month, he doesn't hit at all. But you put him on your postseason roster because you know he was a hitter before, so what happens here could help her out in spite of what may happen at Nationals or whatever down the line. Certainly, certainly. Big, powerful tumbling run. Whoa! And that is something that Marta has said she struggles with. So powerful that sometimes she overdoes things a little bit. Gets a bit hyper, she said. She has tried to help her control. But wow, she can jump, man. She is yeah. dynamic. And Marta Caroli always has something to say. Alicia Sacramone of the United States. Sort of a mild headbutt. <laughs> As Tim mentioned, powerful tumbling. And that's what she does so well in this routine. She performs it with such ease. Look at the height there, but just loses it in the connection to her next element. Very difficult. Too, Very difficult pass. Too much power, over-rotated it. And that was very disappointing. Wow, she, got, Alicia, she yeah. got killed. 8666. Nice now, from a United States perspective, you've got four gymnasts on the team, but three scores count, three gymnasts go. And so when you, as a team, have to take an 866, that's a big hit. Elisa Shino really did the job on beam with a 9-6 plus. also very explosive. Very explosive and amazing dance. This was choreographed by her other coach, Beth Rybecki. Yeah, Al, I'm sure there are a lot of people watching today that have never heard of this young lady, and it is really remarkable. I don't think the USA has ever been nearly as deep as they are right now. They could in a lot of ways, maybe feel two teams that would be super competitive come Athens. It, they really have just a tremendous talent pool right now. And they are all vying for six spots to make that dream come true.
Well, what'd you think? I think that so far she has done an excellent job and done nothing but help her cause to be considered for that team. That is Carly Patterson. Up next for Team USA. She's going over a few things. When we come back in Honolulu, our first look at the Chinese women who had a bye in the first round. Back in Honolulu, Hawaii, for Team USA, Elisa Shino gets a 9.25 for her floor exercise that still has her out of breath. And now taking the floor will be Carly Patterson. Getting a big reaction from the crowd. Marta Caroli, the, the main voice, the big kahuna, as it were, of Team USA. Carly gets the reaction because, well, she's come through on television numerous occasions. She is so popular throughout the United States. And this event floor exercise and Carly Patterson with it nailed down the victory at the 2003 World Championships. And then of course she went on to win the silver medal second place in the all around. That all happened in Anaheim, California and we'll be back there in late June for the Olympic trials. Wow. Oh, just a tent, Val. But you know, those little errors can really mean something when it comes time for Olympic Games and the team competition. You know, Elfie, it really is. It's the loser's lament in this sport. It's just a tent. You know, this is a great, great piece of music for Carly. It's an awesome routine because she has so much variety in her tumbling. Good job. Good job. Too much power, huh? Hey, Carly, it's gone. Not too bad. All right, that's it. Very good. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, we've seen three American gymnasts so far, and all three could be followed by the phrase, too much power. To the Chinese team, Li Lin. We mentioned when we first came on the air how the Chinese finished a disappointing fourth at the last World Championships. And you have to figure that would inspire them to come back and come back strong. Well, if they are going to, it is this event right here that they need the most work on. They told us that they went home from the Worlds and they said, hey, we are weak on vaulting. And quite honestly, Al, they are very weak and really not at a high level internationally. Well, this this yeah. vault just isn't hard enough. They yeah, it's don't, only out of a 9.4, Tim. Right, they, they don't do hard enough vaults, and because of that, they get scores that are in the eights. If you got an eight in a team championships, it's big, big trouble. Yeah, just not good enough. Well, the American team absorbed an eight. Now the Chinese team has to do so, too. Carly Patterson gets rewarded for her floor exercise, even though she stepped out of bounds. Xie Lin, 15 years of age, will try to improve the Chinese status on vault. But she's gonna do the same vault, and it once again is starting out of a 9.4. When we first saw them training, it looked like they had a little bit more power. It looked like maybe some of them were gonna scoot around another half twist, maybe even a double twist, but we haven't seen it so far. Yeah, I thought for sure the potential to do much more difficulty was there, but... 
And what's not, the, what's not the in deal, the guys? And are the Chinese here showing us that they've got a five, six, and a nine in their in their deck, but at home they've got a pair of aces? Is that the story? Well, I think that they certainly at home have some athletes that can vault a little bit better than this, but historically they have just been so tremendous on balance beam and uneven bars, and those are kind of finesse grace events and don't really demand the power that this event right here does and they just have not excelled at that at all. And I find it very interesting that they just came to that realization after the World Championships in Anaheim because this is something we've been talking about for years. Well, this puts them in a big hole. They've taken two eights now, and all these scores count. Zhongu. Okay, now she is planning to do a vault that has a great deal more difficulty, but one out of three isn't going to get the job done. This vault's valued out of a 9.8. That's the maximum she can get. Which puts her on par with some of the better vaulters in the world. A, a, much, a much better vault than, than either of the two Chinese before that, but you saw the big leaping step forward on the landing. Nowhere near enough power to get that around without incurring a big deduction. From Cornwall, Canada, Melanie Banville. Melanie's part of the Canadian contingent that was absolutely thrilled to have qualified within the top 12 teams in the world to send a full team to Athens. They were 11th in Anaheim. This is her best event. You know, it's hard, Tim, for all these women to try and duplicate the feats of the greatest gymnast that Canada has ever produced. And that would be <laughs> Elfie Schlegel. And the, Oops. And, of course, when you miss the bar, you not only lose the element, you lose, you lose bonus points, you incur a five-tenth automatic deduction. It just, it destroys your rhythm. Very, very disappointing. Melanie actually has a twin brother that trains with her in Ottawa and they both travel an hour and a half each way to their gym. They say it's because they have such great passion for the sport. Of course, she's hoping to be on the Canadian Olympic team this summer. The Canadians, Tim, have a very similar trials as, as the Americans do. No hugs there for Melanie Banville. Well, the United States is in a perfect position here. They've absorbed a low score, but China's absorbed three low scores. This is a 9-1-3-3, and that's not a home run. Banville score an 8.15, so that's way off the charts. So Carly Patterson and the United States, they have the lead, and they've got the bye next. Back at the Pacific Alliance Championships and not far from the Outrigger Hotel, you can check in with the guys and gals hanging 10 in the surf off Waikiki Beach here in Honolulu. Now, just a couple of rotations, but already the United States is far in front. We've got a couple of points over Australia. China has malfunctioned. Canada's also not had the start they wanted. Everybody getting set for the Olympic Games in Athens, Greece in August. So everybody's got their own story to tell for the Chinese. It's about coming back from finishing fourth at the World Championships last year in Anaheim, California. The United States team will take this rotation off. They'll just be chilling out knowing they're well in front. Carly Patterson has performed well in spite of stepping out on floor exercise, which is usually one of her strengths. And you look at these faces and you wonder, who is going to be part of the story in Greece. And the Australians, too, as uh, they sit and watch, they wonder, is China going to come back from this World Championships? Is China going to come back from what they did on the vault, or actually what they didn't do on vault? They're on the uneven bars right now. And they do a lot more on uneven bars. This is, at the World Championships, they had a handful of athletes that were just so remarkable on the uneven bars, but they did not perform to their capabilities. That is historically been a problem for them as well. They are great on this event. Tim and I always cringe because we watch hours of practice and hours of podium training, and we can never understand why we don't see one of them on the, on the metal podium. 
Now, guys, at the Olympics, we showed many, many pictures of kids who left their families at the ages of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and went to, like, a gymnastics factory. Is that still in place? Is that still the same thing? It still is in place, even though this girl looks like she's only been there for two years. <laughs> she has been at the National Training Center. They are away from their parents. It is all about performing for China, the People's Republic of China. And now Kylie Stone from Calgary, an Olympic site in 1988. Kylie was actually at the American Cup this past season. Again, part of that 11th place team at the World Championship. She was 14th all around. That was the highest of any Canadian ever at a World Championship. So that was quite a remarkable all around placement for Kylie. Kylie's actually known for her power. We'll see that on floor exercise. She's a very strong vaulter, and the Canadians have really got some high hopes for her. Even at the Olympic Games, if she should make the team, they're really hoping that she makes event finals there. Nice side somersault, but just those hips in back of her feet too far. All about balance. That's why they call it the balance beam. Thanks, Tim. Obviously, some fine tuning to be done before the Olympics. Another low score for the Chinese team. This has not been their gymnastics finest hour. Jia Lin, 8783. Back in Honolulu, Hawaii for the Pacific Alliance Championships. Lee Lin, an 8-8-8-3 on her first routine. Elfie, how did Kylie Stone do on uh, her score for the Canadians? 9-3-5. Okay. The United States has the lead, and it is a formidable lead. And now, this was the one routine that we were watching at the World Championships that we thought was absolutely stunning. Unbelievable energy and power. And watch this transition to the low bar. Wow. At the Worlds, she should have been world champion, I thought. It just remarkable, the level of difficulty. Another release right here. And she has oh. actually altered her routine right there and left out a whole little segment that really kind of even takes this exercise over the top to a whole nother level. Why would she do that? I, you know, I don't know. Maybe just a little bit tired. Maybe they, you know, they haven't been doing so well today, being a little bit conservative. Right after this, she's supposed to do a whole nother se segment of the routine. She just took it out. And she messed herself up for her dismount. Huge form errors there. Yu Fei Zhang. 15 years of age, age-wise, and that's a big part of this. She's peaking at the right time. You know, it's unfortunate because so far from the Chinese athletes, we are not seeing the classic Chinese st uh, style of bar routines. They're making small errors, changing things mid-routine. Very nice stalter work, though, and beautiful the line. Full spin on one arm. Wow. Gigantic oh, another release. big break. Oh, is this the Chinese team? Oh, golly. So you, disappointing. You know what? Unfortunately, though, this is what we often see. These athletes that you, they take your breath away and then they do something where you go, what the heck? What was that all about? Well, Tim, it's almost like they're not prepared to make a mistake. And when they do, they don't know how to recover. They don't know what to do. Let's say this. If you travel, you know how travel can really knock you out. If you've never been on a long flight, 
from China to Honolulu, who knows? You're experiencing jet lag, you're experiencing whatever else goes into to jet travel for the first time, and it's all part of the experience because they're gonna have to fly again when they go to Greece. Well, you know, it, it's funny, Al, because it almost seems like the Chinese women, they choose their team only off of how well they do in training as opposed to everybody knows that athletes perform, different athletes perform differently. Some of them rise to the occasion. Some of them just can't deal with all the extra stuff that goes into any competition. This is Melanie Banville from the Canadian team. Yeah, Melanie had a disappointing bar set trying to come back on balance beam. She was the silver medalist last year at the Canadian National Championships. Th the one thing you're gonna see in this routine is I think Melanie does every leap and jump imaginable in this routine. She really takes advantage of doing some difficult combinations of leaps and jumps. Very, very tough element right there. A lot of time on balance beam, the most difficult elements actually, like that one yeah. right there, they don't look as acrobatic, as difficult, but are, are very, very tricky. And Tim, that element right there, believe it or not, was an E element, which gives her a couple of tenths of bonus. So as you can see, she's really going out of her way, covering the entire code of points and jumps and leaps. She's spending, spending a lot of air time. <laughs> Okay, so a much better, much better event for her here. Off the Canadian effort, back to the uh, Chinese story. Yufei Zhang receiving a 9-0 on the uneven bars. So this is not heading in a different direction for China. And Melanie Banville, a 9.25. And I guess those are finger fives. Back in Honolulu, Al Trowick, Elfie Schlegel, and Tim Daggett. Team Australia getting set after their bye to compete on vault as we go across the floor here to the Mexican team. And their leotards are looking a little Hawaiian. There's a story there. Let's go to Andrea Joyce. Al, the original idea behind the Pacific Alliance Championships was to build friendship among the teams along the Pacific Rim. Well, I can tell you that that spirit is alive and well here this week. When the Mexican gymnasts didn't get their expected shipment of competition leotards here in Honolulu, the local gymnastics community sprang into action. They found enough Aloha print leotards for the entire team. The country emblems were sewn on. And one of the coaches, Antonio Martinez, told me none of the gymnasts are rattled. They are so excited to be here, they'd compete in just about anything. All right, Andrea and Tim uh, with Elfie here, that's got to be a woman thing, you know, to even bring up the <laughs> thought that if they didn't feel good about their outfits, they wouldn't perform well, you know what I mean? <laughs> Elfie, feel free. Yeah. <laughs> All right, to the Australians. And so far, a lot like the Chinese, I, I mean, you just wonder what to make of this team. And we'll see that same vault from all three of the Australians today. Really not the most dynamic vault. It kind of falls off of the horse. But the thing it's got going for it, it starts at a 9.7 relative to what we saw from the Chinese. Most of their vaults were starting at a 9.4. I would say what they, what they do so well is they are just very prepared athletes. Peggy Lydic has helped to devise a system that works so well over in Australia. They all come together, similar to the Americans, as I said. Now to Melissa Monroe. 9-4 start value. Can you get that to a 10 by August? Uh, you No, there's no way you can get that to a 10. The, the best hope is that it gets somewhere in the 9-8 range and a, a very nicely done yeah. vault there. And again, the start value there is a 9.7. I still think that vault is probably the most difficult event for athletes to score high on. Some of the more difficult vaults that are being done in the world today are only out of a 9.8. At least that's what we're seeing in world competition. Vaulting will be a key event at the Olympics. A lot of teams are choosing one athlete just because of vault alone. Uh, the well, American Tim, the, team... The, the vault has determined two of the most important gold medals in American history, 84 and 96. It sure has.
this is actually a really nice uneven bar routine. Very interesting. Does a lot of pirouetting, and the thing that's that's so neat about it is she does it right into release skills. All of these pirouettes. And two really fabulously high release skills, one right there. And there's her second, beautifully done. Just a little bit of a struggle in that handstand. Had to arch out a bit, cost her a, a tenth or two. Oh, it's the leotard, Tim. <laughs> and sleeveless at that. Double layout. <laughs> Laura Del Carmen Moreno from Mexico. She's from Monterey. I understand they have a new arena there. Who knows, we may be having a gymnastics event there sometime soon. Back to the leader of the Australian team, Alana Slater. She's on the vault, like the United States. The Australians had a bye in the last rotation. One thing that Peggy Lydic has said about her veterans is that, that they're uh, on... That's Peggy right there in the background. They're on autopilot. She said they're so easy to train. I don't have to tell them what to do anymore. Now, I don't believe it when a coach says that. They always have something to say. Of course they do. <laughs> we always see them uh, talking about the routines after they're complete. They're always pointing out little things here and there. But, but Alana has been there before. She knows what she needs to do. Laura score. 9116. She looked like she enjoyed that. Slater gets a 9216 on the vault. Doesn't look like anybody's going to challenge the American lead anytime soon. When we come back to sunny Hawaii, it will be the United States trying to hold on to their lead in the Pacific Alliance Championships. Back in Honolulu, Team USA with a quiet moment aboard the Outrigger Catamaran. But here they are at work and getting down to business. They've got a strong lead. We talked earlier about the inspiration of the 1996 Olympics and the gold medal there. Here's Carly Patterson. The 96 Olympics, I remember I was watching it, but like I wanted to play outside. So I just like go back in and out <laughs> my mom. <laughs> She'd make me come and watch it, but I'd just kind of be like, okay, whatever, I want to go play. But, um, yeah, as I, I think as I got um, to, into Elite and I started doing better, then I think that's really when I really decided I wanted to go to the Olympics. <laughs> well, I had nothing to do with 96. This tells me that, Tim and Elfie, you were not riveting enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were riveting. <laughs> You know, Carly Carly. Was a, she was a third grader then. I mean, that's exactly what she should have been doing outside playing. She comes into this competition in good shape. She says, I need to work on my confidence. When you ask her about Athens, she says, I have a good shot. Well, she's got a heck of a lot better than that, but she actually can do a more difficult vault than that. She kind of scaled it back a little bit here. That was a Yurchenko with one and a half twists starts at a 9-7. She's capable of doing a double twist. And the one and a half is the vault that we saw Carly perform at the World Championships. And that actually uh, gave her the silver medal. Had she done a more difficult vault, she probably could have challenged for the gold. How does it work, guys? And we're going to get Carly Patterson's score. Here she comes in with a coach, Evgeny Marchenko. And now there's Marta Caroli. And let's say Marta sees something that Carly is doing, an element, and she wants to change it. Is Evgeny totally for that? Does he fight it? What happens? Yeah. Stephanie Morehouse now. Well, it's certainly, it's a collaboration, no doubt about it. Uh, Marta does certainly want to hear the input from the personal coach, but if you're a personal coach and Marta wants a change, you know, she's the one that decides the team. Australia is second. The United States has a huge lead, and it's going to increase. That's too bad. This Australian team, very, very good on uneven bars. A lot of nice releases, but when you take the risk, you let go of the bar a bunch of times. That can happen right there. Of course, Stephanie is one of the younger athletes making her debut on the senior team, but what that fall does is it also drops her start value.
And this time around, going into the Olympic Games, all the major events, the finals of the Olympics and, and, and other major competitions, it is what they call three up, three count. So when you have a mistake, it is, it is disastrous. A 9-6 plus and a 9-2 plus for Elise Ishino. Good showing for her here in Honolulu. Now, talking about peaking at the right time, it's a little like talking to Lance Armstrong in February. It's way too early. Wow. Well, that's a stuck landing right there. And she is, she's doing fantastic. She looks a little surprised. You know, she got her opportunity to compete here at this championship as a result of how she performed just recently in Brazil. Marta wanted her to prove her stuff again in a pressured situation. Same vault as Carly Patterson performed, but great deal of height, beautiful stretched out body position. The most impressive part was that she stuck the landing. This really was a, a great vault. And I tell you, she is, she is on fire. This is, this is very, very good for Elisa Shino's chances. It's helping a lot. And Elise gets a better score than Carly Patterson. Stephanie Morehouse gets an 8.33. That's another very low score her team's going to have to absorb. As Team USA gathers round with the lead, Carly Patterson has a three-tenths lead in the all-around. Welcome back to the 2004 Pacific Alliance Championships. Al Troutwig, Tim Daggett, Elfie Schlegel, Andrea Joyce. The team from the United States has the big lead over Australia. Marta Caroli is in good spirits and in fine form as she gets set to be the architect for the team that will represent the United States in Athens, Greece in the Olympics in August. Lisa Skinner from Team Australia. There's Alana Slater and there's Lisa Skinner in terms of Olympic experience. Two-time Olympian. She's been on the world team four times. She's been competing since 1995, but she took a two-year break following the Sydney Olympics and has regrouped to come back for these games. This is the only event she'll perform on in these championships. Nice straddled front flip there. Coach Peggy Liddick calls her one of the team leaders, or she said she's a little bit like a mother duck. Not exactly <laughs> sure what that means, but. Well, that, is that a compliment? I, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Struggling just a little bit towards the end of this routine. She's got a lot of skills in this exercise and manages to pull out a stuck landing there on the dismount. And now uh, getting set to mount the vault is Elisa Sacramoni. And this is really where she shines. A hugely powerful vault. She'll do double twisting Yurchenko. And it's the, it's the power and the height that she generates off the horse. This is her best shot to be a major contributor to Team USA right here. Well, well it's a great vault. Great vault. The only thing that she needs to obviously work on. Look at the <laughs> strut. Yeah. She means business. Is the landing. It was a, a majorly powerful vault. The most difficult that we see in the entire competition, just that step back on the landing. And remember, it's only out of a 9.8, so she has to capitalize on getting as many points as possible. If she stuck the landing, she could do better than a 9.55. She's got a ton of self-confidence. And the vault score, as Elfie said, of 9.55 for Alicia Sacramoni. You will be hearing that name in June at the U.S. National Championships and the Olympic Trials. Lisa Skinner, some unfinished business, gets a 9.25. Her teammate, Alana Slater, 9.45 on the floor, 9.216 on the vault. I think we've both been pretty amazed, eh, Tim, that uh, she is in the shape that she's in at this point in the season. She is definitely a contender for her Olympic team. Yeah, I would have to say she looks better now than she did in August at the World Championships. Wow. Huge save, huge save. Yeah, she was way off and somehow 
manage to get that transition around from the high bar to the low bar. Nice release combination right here. Beautiful form in the air. Difficult exercise, stuck landing. Alana is doing a tremendous job. As we mentioned, a high skill level in this routine. Here's that release skill, a little bit off there, but the transition to the low bar, not quite the form that she was looking for, but the important thing here is she continued on, kept the flow of the routine. She will get some form deductions. A lesser experienced gymnast, no way would they have been able to pull that out. She does a pirouetting skill right into the dismount, makes it more difficult has to think a little bit faster. So Australia trying to stay in second place and they get a very solid 9.466 from Alana Slater. Still to come here in Honolulu at the Pacific Alliance Championships, the Chinese women on the balance beam, that's always entertaining as they battle Australia for second place. Plus the United States team, as you continue to wonder, Carly Patterson. Elisa Shino, Alicia Sacramoni. Which of these names and faces will we see in Athens, Greece? Back to Honolulu after this. We are back at the Pacific Alliance Championships in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're getting set to watch the Chinese women on the balance beam. And so far, it has been a subpar effort from a team that represents a country that has often, and in most years, set the standard for excellence in gymnastics. At the World Championships on this event, it is where they lost their bronze medal to the Australian team, and it didn't come in a performance. It actually came. They got what was called a neutral deduction. They were being told that they had to get off of the podium and could not, according to the Chinese delegation here, did not understand what the head judge was saying. They feel actually very bitter about that. In many ways feel that they were robbed of a bronze medal. Well, it was a technicality. And you don't like to lose in a technicality. But regardless, this is an amazing team on this event. I think what makes them stand out is the way that they work balance beam. And, and they remind me of, you know, working these routines on the floor exercise. I mean, who cares that that's just four inches wide? To them, it's not. They're so smooth. They're so fluid. Like Carly Patterson, they take their time before the big skills to prepare. Very, very precise. And we saw this type of performance in the practices. They actually are coming through on this event. Very odd dismount yes. there, though. Saw her doing that in training, and Elfie and I were... Simple. <laughs> There's no way that that's her dismount, is it? Well... Guess what? It was. <laughs> but with an exercise like this, you can kind of get away with doing maybe not as difficult a dismount. These routines are jam-packed, and they keep moving well. A lot of these elements are, are done in combination, and the critical aspect is not stopping in between each one of them. They do that exceptionally well. It's a 9-5, and that's a step in the right direction for the Chinese team. You know, some guys might listen and say you guys are being critical, but it's their standard. They set it. They that sure you're did. comparing to. Well, absolutely, and at this stage of the game, you have to. You have to try to uh, set, a, set apart some of these athletes and what other countries do better than some other countries. So, yeah, it's, it's 2004, and the Olympics are right around the corner. Yu Fei Zhang. And that's another thing. If someone says you guys are being critical, it's like you want to laugh at it because, hey, Guess what the judges are going to be. Exactly. <laughs> so they have wonderful presentation. They have a great display of skills. Excellent. Beautifully. Just flawless execution. And as tiny as she is, she makes it look so powerful. Tipping her head back on that leap makes it 
significantly more difficult, loses sight of the beam. Actually popularized by a country woman, Yang Bo. Now the music, by the way, is not for her beam routine, it's for floor exercise, which is going on at the same time. Actually, she has left out a skill that she did in training. Na nice landing there, but that could have been an even bigger score. Yeah. She's going to lose a couple of tenths in bonus. She took a, a punch front out of her exercise. This could have easily have been a, a routine valued out of a 10.0, much like Carly Patterson. We'll get to her score. Let's go to Kylie Stone. She's on the floor exercise, and so this time the music will be for her. And I think what she represents is power. You'll see that in her tumbling. It truly is the best quality of her routine, is, is the tumbling. Elfie, am I being fair? It really felt like Kylie was at one speed and the music was at a faster speed. Yeah, I don't, I agree, Al. I don't think the music was the best choice for Kylie. Obviously, as I said at the beginning, the tumbling was really the best part of her routine. Yufei Zhang on the balance beam, a 9.416. Gets a smile out of her. So China trying to catch the Australians. Kylie Stone gets a 9.35 on floor exercise. She's not fretting about that. We'll stay with this battle for second and third. Zhang Gu. It was a really rough start for the Chinese on the vault. 9-1-1-9-1-3-3. She has a very definite style. Very, very planned and choreographed. Slams her feet down to the beam, grabs it with those toes. Always struggling. She's got really tight muscle definition. I found of, of the four athletes that are here that she was actually the one that was a little bit more tentative, mm. I was going to say, and it shows right there from practice sessions to the warm-up prior to the competition, just a little bit unsure of what she was going to do. That fall is going to really hurt their cause in trying to hang on to third position. Even with the big lead, Team USA has made some mistakes. Carly Patterson stepped out on floor exercise. The Canadians have fallen. The Australians haven't been sharp. The Chinese haven't been sharp. It's 
it, it's it's really sort of a, a back into a second third place here. Well, and it's working out all the bugs for a lot of these athletes. These are the routines that they're planning to use in Athens. They feel that with just a few months to go, they need to perfect those routines, not make any major changes. Saw one of the Chinese coaches checking her watch. I want to wonder how quickly they can get out of here. <laughs> As we continue here in Honolulu, we'll get a chance to see the fourth and final member of Team USA. That'll be Katie Heenan as the United States team switches to the uneven bars. Before we go, we get the score of Zhang Gu, and that will be an 8.833. Still, they're into it. Pick a word somewhere above formidable, and that's the lead the United States has in the Pacific Alliance Championships as we move to the final rotation. Good battle between China and Canada for top three. Now we turn to the United States. Katie Heenan is the one we haven't seen, and Katie was in such a good mood when we interviewed her. We said, hey, Katie, give us a little Shania Twain, and she did. <laughs> up, 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 can only go up from here. Up, 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 where the clouds gonna clear. Up, up, there's only one, but up from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She wants to be on American Idol, I think. Okay. <laughs> Katie says the little ones. You know, she Katie was such a good sport to do that. But you know when she sees the tape, mortified. Yeah. <laughs> she loves to sing. She was actually skipping on her way down the hallway to the, uh, to the interview. She's been in such a great mi uh, mood, having a great time at this competition. She says the little ones on her team refer to her as the big sister because she tells them when to eat, what to wear, what time to catch the bus to get ready for the competition, the trainings. She likes that role. And this is Katie's best event. She is a bronze medalist at the 2001 World Championships on the uneven bars. You know, we asked Marta about Katie, and she said, you know, Katie really, truly represents the classic gymnast. She's got great lines, great technique, and she really feels strongly that international judges can really appreciate her form of gymnastics. She did say, however, that if she just does what she's capable of doing, which she just did here on this uneven bar routine, she's good enough. Sometimes she doesn't, though. Sometimes the pressure gets to her a little bit. Katie Heenan. That's a good score. Mm, very good. 9.516. Jia Lin for the Chinese. Oh, boy. A couple of scores in the eights, and that's kind of the way it's been for the Chinese women here today. Floor exercise. Difficult first tumbling run. This is a full twisting double. You're going to see four tumbling passes from this athlete along with her teammates, and that's really become the norm on floor exercise today. I've seen a little bit of improvement, the choreography. They've done something very different in this country since last year's Worlds. Changed their music. They've obviously brought in a much better choreographer. I'm seeing more expression from these athletes. This is a good thing for them. Well, you know, they told us that the beginning of the competition that they knew they needed to get better on floor and vaulting. I think that they have gotten much better on floor, both the choreography, the, the, the dance, and some of the power elements. They're doing a good job there. They just really need to upgrade their vaulting, though, to, to be a contender come Athens. 
That may have been China's best moment here in Hawaii. We await the score there. Elisa Shino from the United States. Boy, she's had a very impressive day. Look at the consistency of her scores. From the gym of Steve and Beth Rybecki, 2000 Olympian, trained at that gym, Jamie Dancher, also another former national champion, Vanessa Atler. Listen to the teammates. Yeah, this team, wow. Boy, she she She's made a huge statement. She was awesome today. I, I don't think she could have done any better. How would you like how would you like to endure the Olympic trials for an entire year? That that's what's going on. That is exactly what Team USA has stressed that it is not just every day but it's every turn that you take in gymnastics. Right. We're watching, we want your best every single time you touch the apparatus. Well, we've got something interesting working here now, and we've got basically the status of Carly Patterson. Now, does anybody, you know, think Carly Patterson is uh, subpar if she doesn't win this Pacific Alliance? I don't know about that. But if Elisa Shino could come here and be better than Carly Patterson, that would be huge. And so far, has she been better than Carly Patterson? Well, she's, she's been darn good. I think Carly actually comes in with a little bit of a lead, but... It wasn't much. No, Ashino has been, she's been fabulous today. Chinese women still on the floor exercise. by far one of their best events for today. I'm seeing some really great personalities shine through on these routines. Not to mention, we talked about the tumbling. They've got great variety here. Chinese women done. Carly Patterson is not. She's got a title to win here in Honolulu after this. The Pacific Alliance Gymnastic Championships brought to you by Ziploc, designed with you in mind. By new Venus Divine, reveal the goddess in you. By Outrigger, come discover Outrigger's legendary island-style hospitality in Hawaii and throughout the Pacific. And by Allstate, are you in good hands? Smiles for the Chinese women. Shen Gu gets a 9.316 on the floor exercise. They are done. Couple of things to get finished. One, who's going to win the Pacific Alliance Championship? Well, Carly Patterson has had a very solid day. 9-8, 9-4, 9-3. All she needs to do on the uneven bars is get a 9.1 to win this event. 
And that should be an easy stroll down the beach for this young lady. She's actually gotten a lot better on the uneven bars. Her shoulder angle much more open. Does a lot of elements in combination. Gives her some big bonus points. There's a release coming up. Nicely done. Oh, I could see that coming. Wow. What, what just happened? Wow. She barely got her, her feet on the bar, didn't turn her body over at all, going from the low bar to the high bar, and just ended up catching the high bar with, with no counter swing at all. So had to struggle and muscle her way so up to how the high major bar. is that that's a big deduction that's a big deduction probably as probably as much as five tenths of a point she looks stunned she also as Yevgeny just said there added a giant in between an element she's supposed to connect right from a pirouetting skill into her release skill and didn't. She almost looks like, hey coach, how did that happen? I, I don't get it. enough for Carly Patterson. She's definitely not happy with that performance. And I don't think that that will be enough now. You don't think she'll get a 9-1? No, no, I don't. No. The routine is only valued out of a 9.8 with the mistake. See, she doesn't get her feet on the bar. And she's in a dead hang. That is called, it's a stop, and it's a major deduction. And Carly Patterson is not going to do it. She gets a 9.05, which means Elise Ashino has put a major marker on her gymnastics map. One last gymnast to go. Wow. Alana Slater for Australia. Very consistent day, 9.4, 9.2, 9.4. She's done a tremendous job today as well. Boy, that look on Carly Patterson's face was major. Really nice combination of skills right there, taking a huge risk in the first element, adding a full twist. These routines you're going to see here from the Australians are a direct result of Peggy's coaching. She coached Shannon Miller to a gold medal in 1996. With this routine, Australia can lock up second place over China at these championships. Tim, your favorite move right here. Love that Anodi. But as we just saw from Carly, you cannot afford an error. All scores count in this competition. Australian coach Peggy Liddick said, the entire women's team, all the routines are set. All they have to do is be consistent and she was the model of that here today. Nothing major there. Australia trying to hold off China. That could do it. But for Team USA, look at the hug Marta Caroli is giving Elise Ashino. That she would beat Carly Patterson is a totally foreign thought. We'll recap and tell you the men's story of what happened in Honolulu after this. You're driving along. A car pulls in front of you. Another pulls.
Colorado. We're on the drive to Arena Bowl 18. The AFL on NBC next. In the men's competition of the Pacific Alliance Championships, it came down to Team USA and the team from China. From the United States, Jason Gatson, Steve McCain, Morgan Hom, and Paul Hom. What happened to me early on? Well, same format, first of all. Three gymnasts on each event, so all scores count. And that's what got USA into a little bit of trouble off of the bat. Good routine from Jason Gatson. And he received a 9.516. But the Chinese were just a little bit better with hugely powerful vaulting. Li Ranji on vault. Two and a half twist. And just the smallest hop on the landing brings in a huge number, 9.7. Now in rotation two, the Chinese men continue to excel. Have such classic bodies, beautiful body lines, toes. And this is where the wheels started to come off a little bit for Team USA. Steve McCain not getting those feet where he needed them. Stumbles on the landing, a 9-1. Rotation three, the United States trying to come back and another slip up from Jason Gatson on the parallel bars. Remember, every score counts. Oh. And that, that score right there can be one point higher. That comes directly off of Team USA's score. And China so far has been Phenomenal. Yu Yanan, 9566. Could, could the United States possibly come back from that sort of a deficit? Well, they needed help, and they got it right there. Out of bounds for an 8 3, Lu Bo. And, and if you need to rely on somebody, well, then a guy named Paul Hom, who happens to be the greatest gymnast in the world currently, the all-around world champion. And here, just fabulous. He can actually do an easy routine that still starts for a 10 from him. And One little step on the landing, a 9.65. The United States makes up two and a half points in that one rotation to floor exercise. And it just keeps getting better for Team USA. This is Brother Morgan, who himself, in his first Olympic Games, was a finalist. Both of these guys right here, they could actually, in Athens, my opinion, be 1-2 on floor exercise. They are that great. Not good, great. In the final rotation, the Chinese men chalked up for rings. And, and this is where it, it got even worse. You can't fall out of a cross at an international competition in Gymnastics 101. Can't put your hands down on the landing. With that stumble, the Chinese men fell to third and, as the United States went to the pommel horse. And Paul Ham, who struggled at the Visa American Cup this year shows that he is getting back on track. And Paul had five scores above 9-5. And these days in gymnastics, that is saying something. He easily won the all-around competition by almost two points. Yeah. And that right there, the biggest score of the entire competition. Afterwards, victorious Paul Hom and his winning team spoke to Andrea Joyce. Congratulations, guys. The last team competition for the USA before the Olympics. What does this tell you about where you guys are? Uh, this shows us exactly where we are and what we need to do for the Olympic Games. And uh, coming out here and hitting all but one routine as a team just shows, shows how prepared we are for the Olympic Games and how strong the team we are. You did get off to a slow start. What do you need to do in these next couple of months specifically to prevent that from happening in Athens where the competition will be stiffer? I think just that we need a little bit more practice in competition and we'll get that at the U.S. Championships and Olympic Trials so then we'll be fully prepared for the Olympic Games by then. All right, we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Thanks Thank a lot. Good job. And with Blaine Wilson rapidly healing, the American men still feel great about Athens with good reason. They certainly do. They are a contender, not just to win a medal, they could win it all. And Elfie, the women of the United States should still feel great about what could lie ahead for them. Well, I think with the great depth that they have on their team, the question is by how much 
will they win the Olympic Games? Congratulations, Elise. First of all, we talked earlier about the importance of a competition like this right. for someone like you, an up and comer. How much do you think you helped your cause here? Um, I think I did pretty well and I was able to fall through doing my routine, so I'm just really excited about doing that. Carly, you've had so much success this year. You were cruising through this competition. Take us through what happened on the last rotation on bars. Um, on my half turn on the low bar to my bar change, I just went over a little bit and I couldn't get my feet on the bar to like shoot up, so I didn't have any swing, so I couldn't like finish it the way I wanted to. And Alicia, how about you? It seemed like you started the competition a little bit tentative. What was it like for you out there? I was a little nervous at first, but uh, once you get going and your teammates are cheering for you and have everyone here, it cools down and you get more calm. Katie, I'm not sure anybody was having as much fun as you were out there today. <laughs> but what I want to talk to you about, though, is a little bit about the strength and the depth of this U.S. team. You've been to the camps. How much competition is there going to be to get on this team, this Olympic team? There's a lot of competition. The USA is deep. and um, But if we can stay strong like this and support each other, we are going to send an amazing team to the Olympics. Some will make it, some will not. Join us for the excitement of the U.S. National Championships the first weekend of June and the Olympic Trials the last weekend of June, setting the stage for the Olympic Games in Athens, Greece in August. For Andrea Joyce, Tim Daggett, Elfie Schlegel, I'm Al Troutwick. We'll see you again soon here on NBC.